Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry from Mowers and Blowers. It's a couple of days now since I filled this tire. Still holds air, guys. With pressure on it, too. So, while I'm really happy about me finally getting uh, this thing going and all... I think it looks kind of funny, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, the front part is so tall and big, right? And then you got these little weeny tires, you know what I mean? Yeah, they hold air. Yeah, they don't rub. But it just looks kind of funny, you know what I'm saying? And remember, this was supposed to be a mud mower since <laughs> it uh, doesn't have a mower deck, so you, it's really not really a lawn mower, you know what I mean? It's just for recreational use, driving it around and having your neighbors stare at you, you know? So I think I've got another idea. Got my old John Deere RX-75 rear engine riding mower transmission out. I basically just took this transmission off of the thing when I parted it out. And I never really actually tried to get the wheels off of the transaxle. I was just assuming that they were fused on there uh, like this one. But you know what? I'm going to try. I'm not going to. I'm going to try to get these rear wheels off of the transaxle. And of course, they have problems too. You know what I mean? It doesn't hold air. So if I just get another can of that uh, tight seal, fill both of them. If I can extract these off the transaxle, put some rear wheels on the front, that would look pretty beefy. And uh, hopefully the diameter of this rim is big enough so that it clears that. The only reason why I have these little wheels on was because uh, one of the tires were too wide and it rubs on here. So uh, today, I'm going to try to get those wheels off. I just put air in both of them. I don't hear any leaks. So, you know, the leak couldn't be that bad, you know, slow leaks. So I think uh, that tight seal will work for both of these things. So I've got this thing upright. It seems to be holding air took off the uh, yellow plastic cover as well as the e-clip and it doesn't budge you can see the keyways in there won't come off I'm gonna do some banging chisels hammer bar didn't budge one bit So it gives me a chance to try out something that uh, I've never tried before. As you guys know, I got a goodie box from RSC Chemical Company. They own Liquid Wrench, Gunk, a bunch of other companies, right? Especially that uh, Tight Seal uh, tire repair, tire inflator that uh, seems to work really well. I've always used PB Blaster, but you know what? I'm going to try this liquid wrench for the first time. I'm going to spray some on there. Look at the cap. It's shaped like a nut. Kind of surprised this thing won't come off because as you can see, it's got some anti-seize on there. Or grease or something, you know. Anyway, here we go. Hmm, it's kind of uh, bubbly. Like PB Blaster, it's this brown stuff, and it looks like it just seeps into the holes, you know? This is kind of bubbly, cloudy. I wish I could extract the keyway because then I could use the keyway area to, you know, get fluid down into the canal.
that's not going to really do anything or that. The main part is this part here because gravity is pulling it down, you know. But it doesn't hurt to do a little bit. So I'm going to let that uh, percolate a little bit. Just flipped it over. I'm going to do the other side. I don't know. Just from looking, I feel like the PB blaster, when you blow on it uh, or shoot it on there, it uh, looks like it seeps in more or it appears to seep in more. So I let it sit for a while. I've been banging in that on the axle a little bit, you know, tapping it, tapping it. Then uh, some wax with it, you know. Looks like I'm starting to make a little bit of progress. If you look the. Uh, over here you'll see that it moved like a millimeter upwards see that spacing there so it is moving so far I think uh, might have some kind of success it's moved so much that you can't see that groove where you're supposed to put the uh, the e-clip in there you know so it's moving upwards by about a millimeter so we're making some progress I'm gonna spray some more on there and let it uh, percolate for a bit so it's been a couple of days. Every few hours or so I'd come out and spray it a little bit more. I was banging and banging and banging and it looked like it looks like I made that uh, axle mushroom out a little bit so it's not going to come off. I took a grinder to go around it so it doesn't mushroom so it will come off. I actually put this on top of uh, two handles. One was a welder cart and another was a power washer. Started banging with that one. Even with the five pound sledgehammer, it just made the axles, uh, you know, mushroom in, mushroom out. Therefore, keeping that on there longer, you know. But I would come out here every uh, few hours whenever I'm in the garage and spray some more liquid wrench penetrating oil into the uh, keyway in that entire area. As well as the bottom part here where it's actually, you know, gone down a little bit and uh, gives me a more better uh, area to spray it. But I, it's not coming off, man. I mean, it's not budging anymore. You know, that's it, you know. It's got like a millimeter of the axle sticking out. Won't budge from there. I haven't tried anything other than uh, the penetrating oil, you know, the liquid wrench one. Um, I mean, it, it moved it maybe half an inch upwards. Same goes with the one on the bottom. But I don't think just uh, penetrating oil alone and banging is going to do it. I might have to do some uh, a heat application to it with the torch. But, uh, you know, I, I gave it a try. I mean, some things are just not meant to move around, you know what I'm saying? But uh, just for shits and giggles, I'm going to try uh, my go-to thing. I'm going to try some PV Blaster in there and see what happens. Just sprayed some uh, PV Blaster, but that's not penetrating oil, it's just lube. I didn't have any more PV Blaster. Uh, anyway, incidentally, um, this one actually holds air after three days of pumping it up with nothing in it. This one... dead. I'm going to need some more tight seal. That is, if I get this off. If I don't get it off, what's the point?
with that sledgehammer and chisel. Not budging, man. So this is the other side. I managed to uh, sledgehammer that um, another millimeter or so. It did go down a little bit. But then it started to mushroom again, you know, the axle, which prevents the wheel from coming off. So I took a grinder, my newly fixed grinder, might I add, just to uh, smoothen out the edges so that it would come out. I'm gonna bang it a little bit more, but honestly, guys, I don't think this is gonna work. Listen, uh, so obviously I'm reviewing Liquid Wrench, right? Sometimes, you know, there are just things that uh, it's not meant to do, meant to be, you know? Liquid Wrench is designed to take off uh, rusted bolts and nuts and stuff. Um, not, not, not really uh, wheels off a transaxle, you know, that's a tough task, you know, it's always been a tough task. If you guys have tried to take a wheel off of a rusted uh, transaxle, you'll know what I mean. I've pretty much tried everything except for a flywheel puller, which I do have, but this one doesn't have holes to put the uh, studs through. I mean, theoretically, I could drill two holes there and uh, stick the stud through and put nuts in the bottom, but you know, if this is not meant for it to have that, I don't want to ruin the structural integrity of the wheel, which completely uh, defeats the purpose of me using a wheel. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to bang it some more, but... Uh, the liquid wrench did get it to move about uh, three quarters of an inch off. It's just that ending right there that you just I just can't get off. You know, won't come off, won't budge. I guess if I could push it back down again and use some more of that liquid wrench on there, and then try to bang it all over again, I mean maybe that'll work. I'm gonna try that. I banged it back down again, maybe two millimeters at the very end now. I'm going to liquid wrench it again and try to bang it back out. Use the chisel and I've gotten it uh, up to that point again. Just won't go anymore, you know? I mean, at this point I've damaged the transaxle already. If I was going to ever use this transaxle again, I'd have to uh, weld the wheel on. You know, I don't think I'd have any trouble though because uh, you can't even get the wheel off. If you put a wheel on here, I'm sure it'll hold there. Of course, I've uh, now mushroomed it again, you know. You guys know that when I'm determined to do something, I really I try to do it, you know. But uh, at this point, uh, I think it's about time to uh, throw the uh, white flag out, you know. I was like, screw that, man. I'm going to get this damn thing off. It's the last thing I do, seriously. So I took a grinder, well, the same grinder, but instead of the cutting wheel, I put the grinding wheel on. Just to smooth out the axle and took off like uh, a bunch. So, uh, now it should be thin enough to just slide right off. I mean, it oughta, since it moves that much, you know what I mean? It moves about three quarters of an inch. So, if I just smooth out the end, should be nothing that prevents it from coming off. Son of a gun.
Success, success, I tell you, success. Son of a gun, man. Three days. Oh my god. See what I did there? That end of that, of that uh, transaxle is thinner than the rest of the transaxle. That's what was binding it on there, was that when you bang it, it mushrooms out so it prevents it from coming out until you grind it smooth again, you know? That's why anti-seize on your axle will prevent this from ever happening again. I guess this uh, transaxle is still okay to use if you had to, you know? You could always find some way of putting the... Uh, wheel back on there. If you really wanted to keep it on there, you just put some uh, red Loctite on there. Stick the wheel in there. Do a couple of tack welds on the end. And keep it on there. So I guess I won't trash the transmission. But Jesus! I got another one to go! Anyway, that's it. When I'm determined, I'm, I'm gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how long it takes. I got plenty of time. Well, not plenty of time. I am 50. <laughs> Anyway, so that's my review of uh, Liquid Wrench Penetrating Oil. Does it work? Yeah, I guess it does. Did it work well? It's uh, indeterminable because, uh, you know, I don't know if this was meant for some crazy task like that. You know what I mean? I don't know what could have done that one. Um... I needed to do a lot of other stuff, such as uh, torching it, uh, making it hot, banging it, different kinds of techniques on how to get that wheel off. But uh, is Liquid Wrench a good product? Yeah, I'm sure it's a good product. It, uh, I mean, we have success, right? I accomplished my goal with it, right? I didn't have any PV blaster, so I couldn't use it. But uh, it's tough. So you know what? After all that, yeah, it looks pretty good, right? I put some uh, lithium grease on the axle. It's too thin, won't fit. This thing is too thin. I mean, the wheel is too wide. I won't be able to secure this wheel on there. Can you believe that? You know what? There's a will, there's a way. I'm going to grind down that, not the uh, transactyl, but the outside stub about half an inch so I can get an E-clip and a washer on there. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll do that. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do on my next project. If it kills me, I'm going to get that wheel off that axle and put it on this thing. If it kills me, I'm gonna do it. Wait, so I'm just grinding down like a half inch of steel. You guys can say what you want about the $10 grinder, but you know what, man? Gets the job done. Let's see if it fits on here now. 
So I ground it a half an inch down and I was able now to put my washer and e-clip on there. But it's a little tight, you know. It doesn't spin as good as I want it. I'm going to try my other product here that I got from RSC Chemical Company. Uh, one of the companies called Liquid Wrench. Liquid Wrench is like uh, PB Blaster. So this is the uh, penetrant and lubricant, kind of like WD-40 with PB Blaster mixed in, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it has one of these things here. Focus. Damn it. There we go. Press for lock. Neutral, I guess, and then squirt. Ooh, comes out really well. comes out foamy. Success, success, I tell you, another success. That looks way better than the little tiny weenie tires, huh? Nice. Anyway, that was it. I'm gonna do it on the, on the uh, other side. You got Determination, man. Got it done. Got the John Deere RX-75 rear tires off and put them in the front. Grinded down a half inch of steel off of the uh, hub and uh, got it to fit with the Eclipse. And it looks much nicer now. Much more beefier. The uh, tight seal on this side, it's been four days, almost five days, since I put tight seal in here. Look at that, still holds air. Fantastic. Anyway, that's the conclusion of my uh, LTV-10 Craftsman Vera, Vera Drive lawn tractor to mud mower sort of conversion. All right, see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Thanks for watching, everybody. Follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. See you guys next time.